Forgive me, Michael, can you explain real quickly what a structural device is? I'm, I'm a little unclear. Um, sure. Well, first of all, let's just talk about what structure means. Structure or plot structure simply means the sequence of events. What's the sequence? What happens and when does it happen? So let's say you're writing a script and you know you want a car chase in it. Um, then is it going to open the movie? Is it going to be right at the midpoint? Is it going to be the climax? Is it going to be where does it occur? That's, that's a structural question. So what we've been talking about extensively is my approach to the overall structure of a story, which are the six stages which are created by those five key turning points. But within each stage, you still have to be smart about what the sequence of events would be. So there are some other tools you can use to do that, some other structural tools you can use that will help you maximize the emotional experience for the audience. So let me give a couple examples. One of those um, would be anticipation. Keep in mind that when we go to the movies, what we like to do is try and guess what's going to happen next. We're always thinking about, oh, what's going to happen? And, and, uh, and the movie, you want to create anticipation in the movie. So if you go see Jaws, Okay. <laughs> this is yeah. now the well, third time this has happened. I'm thinking it. You yeah, say yeah. it. Yeah. Well, Jaws is such a classic <laughs> example of anticipation, but it was sort of because of the necessity of having a broken shark, all they really had was a dorsal fin. But every time we see the dorsal fin, we're anticipating, oh my God, here comes the shark. In fact, this has nothing to do with the screenplay, but John Williams had a lot of anticipation by creating a theme just for the shark, and now all you got to do is hear da 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 da, and everybody in the world knows what those two notes mean, and so that's anticipation. So we love that because we don't want to just sit there bored and only only enjoy emotion right when it happens. We want to think about the conflict to come because emotion grows out of conflict. So that's anticipation. But to create that anticipation. There is another device that's really effective to use, and that's what is known as superior position. Superior position means tell your reader or your audience something that some of the characters in the movie don't know. Because that lets your audience or your reader anticipate what's going to happen when the people who don't know that this is happening or this exists, who don't know what I know, find out what, ha what, what I know. So the, the classic example of that would be in a suspense thriller. And then that means you go to Alfred Hitchcock, which he talked about this all the time. He had an anecdote he used to say, and that is, if, you have, if you're shooting a film and two people are sitting across a desk, and all at once a bomb that was hidden in the desk goes off and they're blown to bits. He would say, I'm paraphrasing, he said it much more elegantly. He'd say, you could probably squeeze about 60 seconds of emotion out of that because we'd be shocked and surprised and it'd be awful. And then the audience is saying, okay, now what? But he said, suppose the camera cut to the bomb inside the drawer of the desk and we know it's there, but the two people at the desk don't know. Then you could milk that for 10 minutes because we're thinking, where's the bomb squad? Get out of the room, get out of the room, get out of the room. And because we know that the bomb is there, but the two people at the desk don't know. We have superior position, and with that superior position, we can anticipate what's going to happen. And we're anticipating the horrible violence, and we don't want it to happen. So now we're deeply emotionally involved in that conflict for a much longer period of time. And if you want a more recent example of that, I'm not going to say too much for the sake of those who haven't seen it, but I strongly recommend everybody see Eye in the Sky. And all I will say about that is, for a great example of superior position, we know what's going to happen, but the girl selling bread doesn't know. And that creates tension that lasts in that movie for at least, I would guess, 30 to 45 minutes. Because that whole movie, in a way, is built on that superior position and anticipation of conflict. Um, a third example of a uh, structural device that um, I recommend highly is uh, a ticking clock. That means you always want to build conflict into your story. You can exponentially increase the level of conflict by having 
whatever the hero is trying to do be a race against time. So again, if you have a thriller, it's like they're rushing to stop the killer before the killer blows up the bomb in the cathedral, or they're rushing to stop the bad guy before the bad guy kills the kidnapped victim that they're holding hostage. Okay, so there's a lot of examples of it in action movies and thrillers. Also, though, there's a lot of examples of it in romantic comedies. If you look closely at romantic comedies, very often in the last act of the movie, right before the climax, there'll be a scene, what I call the race to the wedding. And you'll see actually the, 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 the pace speeds up. The hero is rushing to get to the love interest. So in Notting Hill, she comes to him and says that famous line, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her and wants to be with him, the Julia Roberts character, and Will, uh, the Hugh Grant character says, no, I have to refuse because I can't have my heart broken again. He's retreating into his identity. So then he goes to his friends and says, did I do the right thing? And all his friends say, yeah, yeah, that's right. It would be a bad idea and so on until his reflection character, um, um, Spike, comes into the room and they all tell him he just broke up with Anna Scott and he turns to Hugh Grant and says, you daft prick, because that's him holding the hero's feet to the fire and saying you're not going with your truth. So what then happens? We know, and Hugh Grant knows, she's about to leave town. And he has no idea how to reach her except she's giving a press conference. So they all jump in this little car and go screaming through the streets of London to get to um, uh, the hotel where the press conference is so he can get there and declare his love for her before she leaves town. So that ticking clock speeds up the momentum, accelerates the pace, raises the level of conflict and puts, more, puts a greater obstacle for the hero to overcome. And that makes the structure more effective.